Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have four sparkling wines to my left, um, and uh, two of them are reasonably conventional, two of them are not. So we'll start with the conventional ones, and uh, if you can see wet sleeves, it's because one of them, when I was uh, removing the cork, decided to be that just a little bit frisky. A bit like me, really. Anyway, the first two are Carvers. Um, Temper, Tempus 3, Carver Brut. Um, I'm presuming non-vintage, I can't see a... Uh, anything on there. Uh, method traditionnel, as is Old Carver. Uh, let's give this one a whirl. Not sure what the grape mix here, but uh, from the smell of it, it's some of those uh, more traditional uh, Spanish grapes. You know, the, the, the three traditional Carver grapes for, for white Carver. Uh, Macabeo, Pariada, and Sorello. And there's a slightly, uh, there's a yeasty edge. There's a slightly um, preserved lemon edge. But this is almost like a saline bite to it. That, it that's what makes me think it's the, it's a, I, I, I often get that, that character in, uh, coming through in, uh, in Macabeo. Well, I don't know how old the base wine is there, but there's quite a lot of richness to it. Um, and almost a toffee-like edge alongside those uh, salty lemon character. And it, it, sometimes carver can be a bit, uh, a bit shrieky. Here, it's got, um, yeah, it's got quite a lot of weight, and you're left with this uh, slightly savoury finish that makes me think it's more uh, the sort of wine I, wa I want to actually uh, drink with food rather than, than have by itself. But I've got a little bit in my glass, so I might as well drink drink that rather than uh, pour it into my little spittoon. Nice intro. I like that. I like that salty tang. Uh, the second one, uh, a rather um, gaudy or gaudy, should that be, uh, bottle. Uh, this is Villa now, um, Brut Reserva, Barcelona. And um, again, non-vintage. I'm pretty sure that it's the... Uh, yes, the, the traditional grapes, um, yeah, aged for more than 15 months. I can't remember what the limit is for Carver, uh, but um, it's pretty, I think it's less than a year. I'm not sure. Anyway, if I'm wrong, slap wrists all round, and I will point, point a little uh, thing saying it's actually nine months or it's... Well, anyway, better try the wine. Similar type of aromas, um, that slight salty character, um, but um, here it, it feels like it's going to be maybe not quite as mature and a fresh, fresher flavours. Let's try it. I mean, they're both pretty good. Uh, this one seems to be maybe a touch sweeter um, and maybe a touch younger. Uh, but again, uh, I like that slightly savoury character that you're left with. It's not one of those wines that is immediately um, in your face fruity and uh, quite subtle with it. And uh, what, they, the, what, what, what you're left with is this yeasty, biscuity character um, and uh, it hangs around in your mouth and then that you, you've got that little bit of uh, uh, lemony fruit. I'm gonna have another slug. I like that. Okay so those two are the conventional ones. Third one, um, there's um, England has been doing sparkling wine pretty well for the last uh, well, I, I suppose uh, 25 years really. Uh, it started in the early 90s but this is the first for me. Um, it's uh, English sparkling uh, Fumé, and um, uh, so made from Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, what it says on the back, uh, wine made from a blend of 2013 and 2014s um, and uh, before bottling for secondary fermentation in April 2015. And so we are, um, we are at the back end of 2017. I'm not sure how long it would have been in the bottle, probably 18 months. Uh, but my first English sparkling Sauvignon. Let's see what it's like quite a bizarre aroma. There's uh, something that's a little, a little bit like celery. There is this real greenness to it. Uh, freshly mown grass. And, uh, 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 and these classic cool climate Sauvignon uh, characteristics, that little bit of flintiness, that little bit of uh, citrus, and um, more, ooh, yeah, maybe on that uh, uh, asparagus rather than, the, rather than the gooseberry. It's almost got too much flavor. Um, it's called Fumé. It's been in not new oak, but it's been in uh, been in oak barrels, and uh, so I don't notice any uh, any oak imprint. But Sauvignon Blanc is such a, a really strong character of a grape, and you add bubbles to it, and it becomes even more forceful. If you get it in a cool climate like they like in England, uh, sometimes those green, slightly unripe edges, accentuated by the bubbles, come more to the fore. So that's the um, that that's what I'm tasting here. Um, it's um, for me, it's one of those ones that's interesting rather than uh, rather than tasty. I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, the carver in there to uh, uh, to rinse that strong flavour out of out of the uh, 
the glass before I set into wine number four, uh, which, um, I mean, it's, it's not too unusual, but uh, not many countries do, do uh, sparkling reds. Uh, this is Dowie Dual non-vintage sparkling Shiraz Moxie from the Claren Vale. So uh, what I gather, uh, the base of this is it's a 2015 wine, um, and then with um, quite a lot of uh, reserve wine in there. So I think it says, it says the amount on the blend. So it's got, um, uh, yeah, it, it, non-vintage sparkling base, 79%, 2015 Shiraz, 21%. So it's almost like a Solera system. They've got the young vintage, but then uh, more than three quarters of it is the, uh, is the old base wines. And it says it's been um, aged on the Chenin Blanc Lees to add a little bit of fatness to it. Let's see what it's like. Oh, it's, it's a very uh, typical uh, sparkling Shiraz type of character. Uh, black currant pastels, uh, licorice, and this little edge of toffee in there. Not sure what, uh, what the dosage is here, but um, often there is this that you need, if you've got a wine that's got uh, bubbles and tannin, you need something, you need a little bit of sweetness to, uh, uh, to mute those tannins, otherwise the bubbles make them even more, uh, even more noticeable. Let's we'll see what it tastes like. And those tannins are there. Um, there's a juiciness about the fruit, this dark berry and black currant, slightly baked character to, to both of them. And um, it, it, what, you're supposed to drink this with your, with your Christmas dinner, have, have this with your roast turkey. And it's got all the elements there that would work well with a meal like that. It's got lots of, lots of fruit sweetness, it's got tannin to cut through any, any fat, um, it's got acidity which will do the same. Sorry, it's a tannin for the protein, acidity with the fat. Um, and um, it's not, sometimes, I, it, it, it's 2015 is the, is the base. Sometimes you get them when they're young and they're almost too aggressive. Here, I think because uh, it's that greater proportion of uh, older wine, uh, there is a softness and a juiciness. And um, uh, so I, I think, uh, well, it's, it's, uh, we're, we're the week before Christmas here. And um, I, well, I've, unfortunately I've only got this bottle so I won't be able to do, try it with my Christmas dinner, but I can imagine that going down pretty well. Uh, as a wine, it's one of those, again, I, I've, I was saying it the, with the uh, Greyfriars Sauvignon, uh, interesting uh, rather than something I want to uh, uh, swig large amounts of. The, I find this more interesting and more, uh, more drinkable than the, uh, the, the Greyfriars, but uh, to be honest, when it comes to the, um, when I turn the camera off, uh, I think I'll be heading for the carvers first. But in the meantime, I've got a little bit of the moxie left. So uh, churlish not to swig it. And I uh, wish you a happy Christmas.